The Onkyo TX-17 receiver used quartz in its audio circuits. But what about a receiver that uses another precious metal to get that pure sound? What about... Topaz? The Cambridge Audio Topaz SR-10, that is. If you like this video, consider supporting my channel with a donation on coffee. This is the Cambridge Audio Topaz SR10 Stereo Receiver Amplifier. Version 2, apparently. And before you start typing angry corrections, no, I never thought it used Topaz as a crystal oscillator. Topaz is just part of the name. I came across this receiver on eBay and decided to trade in my vintage Onkyo for it. Cambridge Audio has always come highly recommended because of its history of high-quality AV equipment, and since this unit was in pristine condition, I decided to try it. I'm happy to say that the SR10 lives up to Cambridge Audio's reputation. As soon as I plugged my devices into it, the difference in audio quality was clear compared to the TX-17. This unit feeds an abundance of watts to my speakers and fills the room with sound. Music is clear and well-balanced across the sound spectrum, and not only is there excellent stereo separation, but there seems to be a greater dimensionality in recordings. Each part in a recording seems a bit more clearly placed on the soundstage. It makes for really enjoyable listening. Now, that's not to say that the Onkyo TX-17 sounded bad, it's just that the SR-10 sounds that much more detailed and powerful. Maybe the Onkyo's circuits were starting to age, or maybe it was just that it had lower wattage outputs. The SR10 puts out a respectable 85 watts per channel at 8 ohms, significantly better than the TX17. And my mic at bookshelf speakers eat that wattage up and spit it out all over the room. The signal to noise ratio is also very decent at about 82 decibels unweighed, and it shows. The signal is very quiet on all outputs, aside from a small click that's audible when you change inputs on the console, but I can live with that. It tells me that the relays are working. Most impressive for me, though, is the headphone output. If you're familiar with the Roy Unit channel lore, you probably know how the Onkyo TX-17 had a quiet but annoying hiss in the headphone output. But when you put a headphone jack into the SR-10, it's silent. A lot of people talk about headphone outs on integrated receivers being inferior, but on this device the signal is impressively clear. Now if you put a high-end and analytical pair of cans like the Sennheiser HD800 or better, you might hear a slight background hiss, but for a decent pair like my Sennheiser HD558s, the signal is dead quiet. Apparently, the SR10's quiet signals are achieved in large part thanks to its toroidal power transformer, whose ring-shaped windings reduce the amount of electrical interference greatly. Everything inside the SR10 seems well-built, especially for a supposedly entry-level hi-fi receiver. At the back of the unit is a variable speed fan that keeps the components from overheating during extended operation. Generally, this fan only comes on after about an hour of playback, and it's very quiet. You definitely won't notice it. And of course, the outside panels are very attractive and well designed. On the back are your standard banana plug slash bare wire connectors for speakers. There are two sets, like most receivers of this style, plus RCA stereo inputs for a CD player, Blu-ray player, and a turntable plus grounding attachments for the turntable, and inputs for AM and FM antennas. One of the reasons I chose this receiver is that it has a built-in phono stage for moving magnet cartridges, and it does a beautiful job of amplifying my turntable and rendering it loud and clear. On the front panel, we see the controls and display presented in an attractive but simple way. One of the things I really like about this unit is that even though it's at the lower end of Cambridge Audio's line, nothing about it seems cheap. The brushed metal finish is solid and hefty, and all the controls feel very robust. To start, the unit is turned on with a heavy mechanical power button. Pushing it in, you'll hear a satisfying clunk and click as the device's relays draw power to the circuits. 
This is just my opinion, but in an age full of touch screens and voice activation, it's nice to be able to feel and hear that something is about to happen when you turn something on. Moving over, the LCD display tells you what source you're on in nice bright blue lettering, and the buttons underneath let you toggle through them. The big, continuously spinning volume knob lets you control the volume in precise one decibel increments. The display shows your volume in a very technical way, ranging from minus 80 decibels at the lowest end to zero decibels at the highest. It may be a bit counterintuitive for some people, but it doesn't take long to get used to, and if you're familiar with pro audio equipment, it's very satisfying. The auxiliary and MP3 option is very interesting. On the very bottom right of the panel, there is a 3 8 inch jack that you can plug your phone, MP3 player, or iPod into. Sorry iPhone users. The SR10 will then boost your phone's output to line level and play it over the speakers. You can't actually control your phone's playback through the receiver, but it's useful if you want to play something on your phone loud for other people. All these basic controls can be managed with the handy remote control as well. There's also controls on the remote for a CD player, marked in blue. But unfortunately these only work with Cambridge Audio's line of Topaz CD players. You can't program it to work with a different player. Bummer. Now, this is all well and good, but there's only so much I can say before getting to how it actually sounds. So I've decided to try an A-B listening comparison between audio recorded on my Onkyo TX-17 and audio recorded on the Cambridge Audio Topaz SR10 to see what difference there may be between the two. In this test, you'll hear two samples of each clip, one from the output of the TX-17 and the other from the output of the SR10. Each version was recorded from the same source with the same analog to digital converter, and the same sample rate. These aren't exactly laboratory conditions, but it's fairly safe to say that these files are reasonably close to identical except for the receiver used to amplify them. Your challenge now is to see if you can hear the difference. The recordings from one device will always be labeled recording A, and the recordings from the other device will always be labeled recording B but you won't know which is which until the end.
What did you think? Did you figure out which was which? For reference, A was the Cambridge Audio Topaz SR10, and B was the Augeo TX17. Doing an ABX test myself, I was able to tell the difference consistently, but to my ears, one wasn't always hugely better. The most obvious difference in terms of quality was the Cambridge Audio's lack of background hiss on quiet sections, which is an important reason why I prefer it. The Topaz SR10 also renders more details with greater definition, sometimes in subtle ways. There's more space between high treble and low bass on several recordings. Music sounds more accurate and precisely placed on the soundstage, which makes you feel like you're listening to a more definitive version of the audio. But there are still times when the audio from the Onkyo sounds more lively and engaging, such as on the organ section of Reason to Believe. I'd find a way to believe that it's all true. Despite its flaws, the Onkyo gives very good performances, and sometimes its gritty but loud presentation can win out over the Topaz's precise renderings. However, the Cambridge audio still wins out in many cases, most notably here on this recording of Neil Young's Cortez the Killer. I was surprised at how much clearer and true to life the Topaz SR10 sounded compared to the Onkyo TX17. The TX17 doesn't sound bad, but by comparison things just seem fuzzier. On the Topaz recording, I feel more like I'm in the studio listening to Neil's band play, complete with all the imperfections of their performance. And that's why the Cambridge Audio Topaz SR10 ultimately wins out over the Onkyo TX17 for me. While the Onkyo can give lively performances, the Topaz delivers more consistently detailed, accurate, and true-to-life sound, while also, of course, being musical and enjoyable. I'm calling this one a keeper and recommending it for anyone looking for high quality stereo sound on a budget. I expect I'll be enjoying this one for some time to come. Well, that's all I've got to say about the Topaz SR10 for now. Thanks for watching. But before I go, I just want to do a quick update on this channel. As some of you may have guessed, but many of you may be surprised to learn, this isn't the biggest channel on YouTube. A lot of my videos have been popular with a lot of people and I'm extremely grateful to all of you for that. I really enjoy making videos about the music and hobbies I love, and I've been able to connect with a lot of people around the world who share my passion for music, audio, and vinyl. To keep this channel the best it can be though, I've decided to start a Coffee page. Coffee is a simple online payment platform that lets you give small tips to artists and creators using PayPal or other secure payment methods. There's no commitments, you just give whenever and however you want. You don't even need to make an account. So, if you enjoy my videos, consider clicking the coffee link in the description and supporting me for the price of a coffee. Your contributions will help keep this channel running the best it can. In the past, I've used revenue from this channel to buy equipment to make my videos better, like the lav mic and audio capture devices I use, as well as editing software. Coffee payments will also help pay for improvements like these, and make sure you get the best quality content I can make. Okay, that's the end of my pitch. Thank you for listening, and thank you especially for taking the time to watch my videos. I truly appreciate it.